Good evening everybody, here we are again, Tuesday. Now of course we should have done this tile at 2 o'clock this afternoon, but I was still on the road driving home after uh, a couple of days over in Redditch on Hobby Maker and Sewing Street. I've had a fab time, very busy uh, and shattered. And of course Leslie Elf, Tommy and John have been at the office, so some of your orders have already gone out, so thank you very much for those. Um, so yeah, here we are, it's nice to sort of chill out in my own craft room, and I must admit everything's in the car. So at the moment, the craft room is quite tidy. <laughs> so I can actually walk around my desk, which is quite a novelty. But uh, yeah, I thought it'd be nice to sort of keep it going and uh, do our tile this evening. You know, tiles don't stop, as we know. So it's lovely to uh, see all of you here tonight, or to see your names anyway. So thank you ever so much for joining me. Uh, and what we're going to do tonight. So I've got a, a bright white tile. And I thought, you know, sometimes, you know, when we do it of an evening, it's nice to change things up a little bit. So rather than using my black pen, I'm going to use one of the Faber-Castell uh, pit fine liners. I'm going to use the red one. This is the one. doesn't matter. You can use whatever you like. It's just that they, they're quite nice and they go quite nice with their pencil range as well. So there you go. See, so nice fine tip. And... Honestly, at the minute, I, I noticed last night, having a, a look through, Jackson's Art Supplies have actually got these on special offer at the minute. So I think it's about 80 or 90 pence off each one. So Leslie and I did go through the, the list last night and see which ones we didn't have. And so we've, we've ordered a couple. <laughs> so here we go. Um, I've actually inked my tile um, using the, the ink stamps because we love those, don't we? And I've used a very pale grey just to sort of put a bit of a splat in there. So it's uh, going to see how it goes. Sorry for the shadows, but, you know, I've got a light above me and it's, it's getting on. It's quite dark outside. But, uh, yeah, it's all good. So what we're going to do then, we're going to start with pencil to start. And I've got um, a tile, being that my John's ruler is in the car. And I'm going to draw myself a couple of little borders. So putting that to one side for a minute. And I'm just going to bring another tile in. And I'm going to use that to just help me out. Now these um, borders or these lines, we're not necessarily going to see, well, we're not going to see them afterwards. So don't do them too dark because you want to be able to rub them out. Okay. And notice that I'm doing two sides at once. So lining them up. There we go. Sort of giving myself a little bit of a visual and then uh, along we come. There's my first border. Okay. That's the first starting point. Oh, thank you everybody for watching the shows. It was it was lovely, especially yesterday. We had to do a little bit of dressing up, but my goodness me, that black makeup it took some doing to uh, to get it off. Um, and of course, I was staying in a hotel last night, so they only have white towels, don't they? So uh, trying to wipe uh, black makeup off, it wasn't so good. <laughs> There we go. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, Dawn, hello. It's nice to have you back. Not seen your name in ages. Hope you're well. And did we watch John Scott this uh, this morning? Well, this afternoon, wasn't it? Actually, 12 o'clock show. And he's uh, his seahorse. It was fabulous. It was really good. Oh, Karen, you can go and watch them back. They're there for seven days. So just go and have a, have a nose. And certainly with John and his seahorse today, I think it's the... Uh, quietest we've ever known him <laughs> it always happens doesn't it when you give a presenter a bit of tangling to do they uh, they go for it it's lovely that they, they're willing to try you know especially live on air because it must be a little bit apprehensive and they don't want to sort of let everybody down they want to do their best job so there we go that's my sort of first point there okay so let's go a little bit bigger and we're going to start in the middle and I'm going to bring my pen in. So again, you can use your black pen as normal. And I'm going to come in with my red. Hello there, Garth. I'm Wendy. Oh, it's lovely to have everybody. So, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, little bubbles. And I'm going to sort of put them in this corner in this corner here. You see? So sort of cutting across that corner. So I might as well do this one while I'm at it. You see? And then I can line that one. And I can line this one, turn it round, and I can line this one with this one. You see? So we've got bubbles, sort of cutting the corners there. Okay. So 
so <laughs> let's have a look. All right. First thing I'm going to do then is I want to actually come around these bubbles. So I'm going to go around and along to the next one and around. And then while I'm there, I'm going to come around again. So I'm going to do that aura around my shape. And then <laughs> next one, round. And then aura the shape. It's a little bit different when you do it in colour, isn't it? It's not sort of a stock, but I kind of like it. It's nice that if you're not comfortable about trying it, I'm happy to do so and you can see how it looks. And then at the end, I've got one that I've done using a black pen as well. So you can see what you think. Like sometimes it's nice for you to sort of see other things and to try it out because uh, I know it's a little bit daunting. And after all, it's a piece of card, so you can always do it again okay so there we go that's sort of our middle square shape there I say square the square ish <laughs> okay so next job then I'm going to go sort of from inside here and I'm going to put a curve in from here along here so again if you need to sort of pencil it in first or sort of imagine where it's going and then round you come you see and here I can just sort of fill in those gaps there. I'm going to turn it around. And again, you can do this. If you want to do this side, it's fine because everything is uh, going to be all the same on all sides. So I don't think you've got to follow exactly. You just need that curve in. So whatever's comfortable for you, that's what you can do there. Same on this one. And again, I'm just going to Fill those gaps in. Now the same on this one. Along we go. Fill those gaps in. Okay, so that's sort of our first little bit. We can do now because I, I did press on quite a bit with that pencil. I could sort of remove that now. And you might find that yours is light enough that you don't need to do that. But I want to sort of remove it a little bit so you can see what, what it is I'm doing. So far, so good. Just move out a little bit. So I want to move now to this border or this edge here. And I'm going to sort of imagine, let's, let's have a look. I'm going to sort of go up and over to here. So if you imagine I'm going to sort of draw a curve, just slightly in from that one there on the top there. You see, it's sort of a bit of an angle. And then this one here, I'm going to do another bit of an angle and put one in there so let's do the same with this one you see a bit of an angle put that one in a bit of an angle put that one in <laughs> oh hello chris <laughs> i know it's uh it's nice though isn't it I, I, I do like to do the tiles on the day if i can and I definitely didn't make it back too early tonight. It was a little bit later. The traffic was not so good and the rain was quite bad. So it slowed everything down a bit. Okay. So then before I do those, you see we've got these double lines. I think I'm going to come and put that double line in there as well. Just while we're in that process. We could come back and do it later. But I think I'll do it now. There you are. You see, just ordering that line. And then this next one here. And then turning it round again. And that one there. Okay, now yours might be a little bit smaller, a bit bigger. It doesn't matter. You just need that kind of shape in the middle there. And you see, we're back to these dots now. So I'm going to go from this bubble to this one. Moving around. And then around you go. Hello, Helen. Lovely to see your name. Okay. And then this one, same thing, around and down to here. And then that's aura again. Okay. Next one. 
Oh, now, hello, Patricia. What time is it in Michigan? I suppose everybody asks you that, don't they? <laughs> I just think sometimes it, it it amazes me that you know, we I do this from my my craft room at home or from the the office at work, and people so far away are able to watch it. It's fantastic, isn't it? And we can all sort of meet each other and uh, tangle together. It's lovely. You see, I'm continuing with these little curves, joining it to this one. 3.10 p.m. Brilliant. What was I doing at 3.10 p.m.? I'll tell you what I was doing. I was sitting at Tib Shelf Services on the M1, waiting for somebody to finish charging their car so I could plug mine in and charge my car up. That's what I was doing at 10 past 3. And they finally charged it up and left at half past 3-ish. So uh, then I actually put mine on. So by four o'clock, I was back on the road, back on the M1 and uh, back home. Quick trip to a supermarket just to get something for tea. And then home. <laughs> there we go. OK, we've got this kind of shape. It's nice, isn't it? So I'm just going to finish these ones off here by putting another line joining the two. Like so. OK, and of course, we're not going to go in style there and do double lines. We're just going to leave that as a single for now. And same here. So we're going around and joining it. See, a little bit of a curve. And again. And around and joining it in. And then again, around and joining it in. Okay. So that's that bit. And again, I can just now rub out those lines in the in the middle there. They're, they're sort of in the way we don't want them. You see, so you've got that kind of a, a shape. Okay. This is where things change up a little bit because we know that we can do another one of these, see, and that would go in this way and that would go that way and then we could add another one and we can create a, a whole sort of sheet with this if we wanted to. But it's nice sometimes to sort of use a pattern we're familiar with but then change it up a little bit. So I'm going to put a bubble there on the corner of each one. There we go. Let's rip the pencil there. Right bubble on each. So then let's up a bit. Hi Pat, hi Re. And Cheryl. Okay. So as normal we sort of work our way around to this bubble. But what I want to do is I'm going to come up and around to it like so. And then I'm going to turn my tile and then I'm going to come round and join it to that one. So I've got a bit of a loop there, see? So I might as well fill in that gap, that space there. Okay, so let's do that again. So here's my bubble. So I'm going from line to line along and round. And then I'm going to turn it round and along. And round and again, fill in that little loop it's made. So here we go again. Along, around the bubble. Now I could get carry on, but that just feels a little bit weird to me because I, horizontal lines and I don't go. If yours do, that's fine. But it's nice to sort of stop it and, and follow it along and fill it in. Ah, next one. Along. And then turn it. And then along again. And fill that in. So let's have a look at all four sides of that one. There you go. So you've got something a little bit different there. Okay. So again, while I'm here, I'm going to create another little oar inside. You see, this one's a little bit wider than that one. I've, I've done that on purpose. Uh, because I, I want to sort of shade that in a little while. So let's do that all the way around. You see? Putting those little lines in there. And obviously into that one as well. So they're all sort of similar. Working the way around. So there we go. 
okay don't try and worry don't worry too much if they're all a little bit different see this one looks like it's further out than that and that curve looks a bit more than that it really doesn't matter we're not after symmetry in, in this essence we're after just enjoying putting these corner shapes in and, and things like that so what i'm going to do now i'm going to remove the lines from around here again just because i did them quite dark you don't need to see them you don't have to rub them out if you, if you can't see yours it doesn't matter okay so there's our shape all right so let's have a look what we're going to do now i think let's start in the middle i'm going to come in a little bit more then hang on a second there we go and i'm going to put a bubble in about the middle fill it in it doesn't matter which way we sort of turn with this but what i want to do is i'm going to put a loop in And then normally you think, oh, she's going to put a loop that side as well. No, I'm going to put a curl like so. And then I'm going to come back on myself, create that shape. And then the same this way. And then this way. Now, I know some of you out there are serious grid people and you think, oh, that's a bit weird. I don't want to do that. You could split this up into a grid. And you could put one of those in each box, if that makes sense. So if you, you, you're really not sure about putting um, abstract things together, then that's fine. Create a grid and do it within a grid. See, little dots. And I'm going to turn it and turn it again. And again, I'm going to put a loop in. And then another curl. And another curl. You see now mine are touching. That's just sort of a bit of a fluke. If they don't touch, that doesn't matter. Everybody's is going to be a little bit different. There we go. Okay, so we've got that kind of shape. So just sort of on the top of these little curls now. If you've not got yours touching, it doesn't matter. You can still put a loop in there. And then a loop either side. See, just little lines and dots if you can. Oh, Wendy, just go for it. Create your own version. And then, of course, there's different ways of doing this. So if you find that those are a little bit tricky, so one second, I'll find a bit of paper. Here we go. Bit, bit of rough. There we go. So if you find it a bit tricky, you could start by, oh, sorry, doing your curl first. And then if I do a little dotty line, like, Bring your line back to join. But if you find it better to do that kind of thing, do it that way. Or you could do it that way and then make this a bit wider. So there's various ways of doing that. And if you think that one of them you really struggle with, um, don't, don't try and struggle forever with it. Do something a bit different and just keep coming back to it and trying it. So... Please don't, don't worry about that. If, you, if it's a bit tricky, do something else. Okay. So in, in traditional style, let's fill in that section there with bubbles. And the same with this one. Any little bits, of course, let's fill in with ink. Okay. Oh, that's it, see, Wendy. It's just a bit of a practice, but don't, don't kill yourself off doing it. Do a few and then move on and do something else and come back to it. It's fine. Okay, keep trying to rub that thing off. It's a bit rub. It's a bit of the ink off the stamp. <laughs> oh, what am I like? Okay, so that's that bit. So let's have a look at these wider sections here. So whilst I've got that one there, yours, you might find that your wider section there doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, but it, I, I don't know why. I mean, this is um, like this isn't a colour I've used a lot of. I must admit. So it's quite a nice, a nice pen, isn't it? Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna do. Another loop, and I'm going to do a loop that side as well. I'm double, double tasking here, multitasking. And then again, let's do that little curl that way, little curl that way, and little loops. Now, you might find that yours are a little bit narrower than mine. If this space is really small, make this a bit smaller. Don't have to do all the loops, you could perhaps just do this loop. And a couple of those, you don't have to do the curls. 
So it all depends on how much space that you've got. And because we've not measured and I've not given you a size, everybody's is going to be different. So don't let that worry at all. Let's give it a go. There you go. I've got that shape in there as well. So, yeah. Oh, Margarita, let's have a look. I was just saying at the beginning, these ones, they're quite nice. They match the Faber-Castell pencils. Uh, there you go, deep scarlet red. And they're actually on offer at the minute on Jackson's Art Supplies. So I wonder if in the morning they'll have a few orders for some of these. So they've got a few different colours. This is the, the scarlet red. They do a pinky purple and a, a few blues and a sepia and that kind of thing. So um, it's just worth knowing. I think it's about 80 or 90p off them at the minute. Oh, okay. And we're going to repeat this process along here. So again, let's put that loop in. And then I'm going to do that one at the bottom while I'm at it. Little curls. Little curls. And then the loops either side. Only if you can fit them. Don't panic if you can't. It's fine. Oh, have you pat? <laughs> I thought you might. This is a it's nice to wait and find that little bargain, isn't it? So uh, and I know I don't do I do I do do the brush pens and they are really lovely. But sometimes as well it's nice to just try and use a different version, isn't it? It's nice to keep your hand in. And these actually are a little bit finer than my brush pens. So it's it's nice to use as well. If my brush pens were this fine, I perhaps wouldn't have these, but it's nice to have that option, isn't it? So this one's wide enough as well. So let's do um, a smaller version of it, just in case, you know, you're thinking, what, did she, what was she on about when she did a smaller version? So let's have a loop on both sides, just like we normally did. And then I'm going to do a loop on both sides like that. And then same there. See, slightly smaller version. There we go. <laughs> oh, Sue, so, do you know what? Sometimes but hold your pen a little bit further out. I know it'll feel a bit weird. And I don't know, let's just zoom out a little bit. So I know if you hold it here, it feels a bit weird. But if you actually then use this to guide it, hold it upright and it'll actually make you hold it a little bit gentler. So it's quite nice to give it, just try it, try it a few different things. If you're holding it really heavy at the bottom and holding on, just sort of ease back a bit, see if that helps and work your way backwards. Just reduce the pressure. There we go. It's almost like it's just skimming the paper so there's no pressure at all there okay so we see we've got these on there that one on there looking nice all right so let's have a look at the uh, piece here it could be as well the angle yes yeah? i mean i don't know sometimes i quite like to hold them quite high up when i'm drawing you see i've, got, I've actually got hold of it i've got my you can see why i always hold it look <laughs> there you go um, but of course, when I'm in camera, you you want to sort of see what I'm drawing, so you don't want to see the tip of the pen. <laughs> All right, you ready with this one? So again, I've I've left this out of border for now. So what I want to do is I'm going to put on top of this loop we did. I'm going to put a bubble, and then I'm going to create a larger loop. So I'm going to do that on all corners. The same with this one, like a bubble and a loop you see it's just inside that framework there oh hello leslie that's okay i'm sure you can pick up what we've done we did start with three borders one two three borders if that helps you catch up <laughs> there you go all right let's just move it out so leslie can see what we've been doing here we go there you are see so we know we know this tangle pretty well. Yeah. Okay. So back in then. Back to one of those loops. So in lovely fashion. Now I'm going to use this as a guide. So I'm going to come up and round. You see, I'm touching it. And round. And then back. And the same on this side. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to touch that line and round. 
and back. So let's turn it to the next one. Again, up and round. So I'm going to touch the top of that line there, just there. Same on this side. And then again. Up and along. And down. And again. Up and along. And down. And again. Up and along. You see, touching that line each time. It's just a little bit of a guide helping you along your way there. So we've got those little sort of almost a fleur de lis kind of flourishy things. So let's put those loops in. Okay, and again, my little dots. And again, you could put anything in there. You don't have to do the dots. There we go. Oh, that'd be nice. So I know there's a lot of people going to the uh, NEC this weekend. So it'd be lovely if you've all got your Santangle badges. It'd be nice that if you do see anybody, you can stop and say hello. And I bet you'll uh, meet a few people that you... You sort of know on Facebook, but you don't know in person. You could sit and have a coffee and chat. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? But uh, we're not going this time. I'm, I'm actually back on Hobby Maker on Saturday. So and then my mum's coming to visit on Sunday. Okay, so we've done all four around there. And then I'm going to come along sort of from, if you imagine the bottom here, around. And I'm going to put another one in. You see? It's just thickening that area up there. The same sort of thing here. Now you see it's touching that top one. So we've got a little gap, but it's, they're actually touching. And then again. See, so bringing it up and round. And back down. And same on the other side. You see again, they're touching. Oh, Joanne, did I do? I haven't done a stencil for that eye. Um, it's actually in one of the Tangled colouring books. So it's quite a precise sort of uh, thing. I think if I did a book on that, it'd be a little bit <laughs> a little bit thicker than the ones I usually do. There's a lot of steps in it. But it can be done, for sure. It can be done. A lot of circles. Okay, yeah, I think you're all going to be <laughs> hunting for badges now. That's going to be great. It's going to be a nice uh, little sort of hunt, hunt and seek, isn't it, at the weekend? See, I'm just filling that space look with bubbles. Any little gaps. Sad that I'm not going, actually. I do quite like going myself. Even if I'm not exhibiting there, I still like going to the shows. But, uh, this time we're not, I'm not able to. I know Dave's going. Dave Bradford's going to be there, so uh, uh, John Scott's going to be there, and a few others. Liam's going to be there, the guy that we speak to about orders and things. Okay, so far so good. So I was uh, into these now. I'm going to do it, but I want to leave a little little spot of white. See, oh, I'm ever so glad that you like the stencils. The other day i was really excited at the concept and i think there's so much potential and the samples that my creative team did are absolutely stunning so uh, hopefully you got a few uh, bits of inspiration there we go so you're just filling them in adding that little just leaving a bit and of course if you find you've colored it in go in with a gel pen white gel pen and add the dot back it's fine there you go. Okay, let's have a quick look at where we are. <laughs> oh, really? No, I don't think I'm going to do that, really, but there you go. Okay, so that's where we are so far. So let's have a look now. I'm going to, I've got just a little bit at the top here now. I'm going to actually draw a bubble. I'll do it on this one because it's a bit clearer out of the ink. And I'm just going to draw a line there. It's a bubble, rather. See, it's outside the border outside the border so underneath and then one there and then one there okay so with this one it's going to be a little loop coming back in now it depends on how much of a curve you did here is how big that's going to be and again 
I'm going to put little curls. And again, if you don't want to do curls, you could do loops. See? And the next one. Little loop. Curls. And again, you see, I'm taking that curl to that border. Let's go a bit bigger so you can see that. And around, you see, to the border and along. So I'm always using the lines to help me. I'm not sort of trying to do it completely freehand. I've got those guides all the time. Okay, so you're getting something similar. The next one, another loop. And there's curls, one side, and then the other. Okay. Oh, Wendy, there's no, there's no rush. We make them in the office, don't we? So we're ready. Now you want to be, you know, there's, there's a lot of stencils we've brought out recently. So, okay, you see, we've got space here, and I'm going to just create an aura inside. That's my boys making their uh, self known downstairs. There you go. I think we, you know. You see, just sort of fastened it off there. The same here, look. Again, if you want to use your, a tile or your, a rule or a straight edge to put that line in, you can do so. I'm just sort of going to do it freehand, you see? Same with that one. Let's just sort of move down a bit. You see, I've got like an aura on the for those. So, working my way around now. I'm going to do a similar thing in each one of these shapes as I go around. There we go, just sort of closing it off there. And then walking along. And there you go, see? It's sort of following that shape. If they're all a bit different, it doesn't matter. Oh, Christina, I'm sorry about that. Think of it as a butterfly with furry antennae. And do them in bright colours like you would with butterflies. I actually, the design for the moth stencil came about from actually a, a real, a real live moth. That was uh, sitting on my fence. And then next one. See, it just sort of follows the lines. There we go. And next one. Okay, so just sort of going around that shape and bringing that in there. So. <laughs> there we are. So at this point, I'm going to come back in with that rubber and I'm going to now remove that border. How many of you thought I oh, was going to leave that border in? No. It's going. There you are. Don't want it. Again. It's quite something quite uh, baroque about this, isn't it? It's quite nice. So, okay, I'm going to come in. Let's do um, a little bit of pencil, sort of pencil work now. I'm going to start with a regular pencil, my regular sort of one I use for my shading. Let's go a bit bigger and we're going to start in the middle. First thing I'm going to do is, here we go, just a little bit of pencil in the middle there. Keep it light. I'm not, I'm honestly, I'm not going to go over, if I can help it, the red outline. There you go. Just going to keep it within. Now this one, just going to do the bottom. They're really small, so we don't want to do too much about them. And then again, little smirks on those there again just sort of little little bits in there not much okay so whilst i've done that i might as well do these loops and again these depending on the size you might want to do top and bottom or you might just want to do the bottom of it and the next one when do you know what you mean we had a problem with wasps earlier on when we had our kitchen done and it sort of uh, 
opened up a cavity in the wall we found we've got wasps and one of them actually it definitely must have stung benji and we have anything now that comes in a fly comes in if he sees it flying around he gets a bit crazy so if anybody knows how to uh, talk to dogs and say it's all okay and a fly wouldn't really hurt him but uh, he's uh, he's not quite over that yet no, it wasn't very nice. We did have that cavity open and there was about 30 wasps in my kitchen. It wasn't pleasant at all. Sorted now though. There we go. All right. So I think whilst I'm on loops, I'm going to do all loops. See these little ones? I'm just going to do the bottom bits. I'm not going to try and do too much because it'll just get too much graphite around it. We don't want to worry about that. These ones, however, different matter. We can definitely get the top and the bottom in. And again, little smokes. You see how I'm doing mirror image there? A little bit there. Okay. Oh, Leslie, can you remember? <laughs> I know John was at the office and I, was, I did ring him. I was like, get over here now with some spray. We'd run out of the wasp spray. I was trying to swap them all and get the dogs out the house. Oh, do the top bit there. Oh, and I don't particularly like them myself, must admit. Oh, goodness me. Okay. That's, that's a day we don't really want to remember, Leslie. <laughs> oh, gosh. There we go. Okay. Four corners. Oh, smell. That's just, no, it's not good, is it, when they do that? You, you fear for them, you really do. Okay, so let's have a look here. We see we've got this first one we did. This looks like it's going underneath. So I'm going to go across everything. Just bring it down a little bit. You see, faded off a bit. Same with this one. So start a little bit darker and then less pressure. I know we're going to use the tortillon, but I think it's nice to just have a bit of a practice while we've got time. Just to sort of check that pressure on things. And then with it being a pencil, you can always rub it out, can't you? You see, just less pressure. So that's that bit. So looking at the next one, let's go out a little bit. And then onto these ones here. So again, see it's... Quite a large space that one now, but then again, just sort of ease it off a little bit, and the same on this side, ease it off a bit. All right, on to the next one, a bit more here, ease it off. Okay, and again, don't worry about that line because we're going to use the tortillon. And that's going to soften it off again. But I can quite dark in that area there. Certainly because I've not used a black pen. We're used to it being quite dark in those areas. So I'm going a bit heavier. Let's just hunt over a little bit there. And the next one. Onto that one. And then a little bit onto there. So far, so good. So let's have a look at this one. This one, same sort of thing. We're going to sort of do it here and here. Turn it round, same thing. Onto to those sides. And then here. And here, see, so wherever. One looks like it's going underneath. That's where we're going to add our shade. Okay. So at that point, I'm going to bring my tortillon in. I'm going to let, get some of that um, shading done. So here we go. Very gently, just soften top and bottom. Let's go a bit bigger so you can see it there. And I'm going to try and leave a gap in the middle. So we've got a bit of a highlight, so just very little pressure. And this one, we just want to pull it out a bit. Again, not all the way along, we're just softening it so it's working its way 
up towards the edge, leaving a bit of light on the end. Follow this one around a little curve. And then touch in there. So it's very small, so I don't need much. Same with these ones. So again, top and bottom. They're quite small, so I don't need a massive. This one's sort of crying out for a bit of a gel pen, isn't it? So I might do that. I actually might bring the uh, red gel pen in. And uh, touch that up with that in a minute. I think they were in my box. I don't know if I... I don't know, actually, if they're in my box behind me. They're still in the car. You know, you pack everything so neatly and tidily when you go to a show. So you know where everything is. And at the end of the show, everything goes back in the box. It could be anywhere. Never goes back in the same way as it uh, started. But... Uh, it's just the nature of it. You see, it's softening off edges again. Top and bottom. To the next bit. Oh, don't forget those little ones. And let's do these ones. There you go. See, top and bottom. Follow the curves with those ones. And again, soften that one. Doesn't need much, does it? <laughs> Leslie, sorry. Yes, the uh, the stencils from today are all over the place. I think I need to sort mine out from the sample ones. That's what happens. I always end up with half a set. <laughs> I'm a bit higgledy piggledy. So that's that one. Let's have a look at the rest. Let's see. Now we've got this sort of shape. You know where we did the darkness? Let's do the one in the middle first. I'm just going to just start it off because it's quite dark there. Those swirls. You see it's darkened it? But then let's pull it out a bit. Just to give it a bit of shape. Okay. Now you see I've still got that line. I can come back in look, and just add a little bit more swirliness. And there it is, starts to work its way out. See? Rounds and lines. Yeah, I know, Leslie, the sample cupboard's not so good. <laughs> Although, honestly, I haven't put anything away because some of the boxes I can't reach. So they're still all in their packets from the show on the shelf. Everybody doesn't know... Leslie's um, had a, a little bit of time off because I'm moving house. And then, of course, she started back on Monday and I've been in Redditch. So we've not actually been in the office together yet for a couple of weeks. So as you can imagine, um, it's been a little bit chaotic, a bit crazy. And uh, Leslie wants to come in and organise it all again, which I'm very glad of. Yeah. But, you know, when you... When you're working away and you're busy and you wanted to get orders out and things, tidying up comes second, doesn't it? Or third. There you go. So I'm just working my way around now. You're seeing, again, sw using swirls, little lines and zigzags. You know, less and less pressure as I work my way down. just want to give it a little bit of shade in there. Rhea wouldn't say carnage. It's not carnage, and, and Sue, sadly, no, Rob didn't uh, didn't quite work out as we'd hoped. So, uh, yeah, no, Rob's not with us anymore. It's, it was, uh, it's very tricky, I think, when you've got such a close knit group of people that work together. We've worked together for a while now. You know, it's it's quite tricky, I think, finding the. I don't, know the, I don't want to say the right fit. It's not the right words, but the right fit. We are quite a, a crazy bunch, as you well know. We we work very very hard. We we laugh a lot. It's, uh, you know, we've, we've got to know that. Yeah, we've, we've we've got to know that if we leave somebody to do a job, they can do it. So it's a little bit. It's a shame. But there we go. We we gave it a go. We did, we gave it a good go. 
Toby says he's having tomorrow off, Leslie. He says that he still can't get the makeup off and he's got, he's been having nightmares from the skeleton that was holding him on uh, Hobby Maker yesterday. He says it's, uh, he's still got the shivers. If you didn't see that, I did take a photograph, so I will post it on our page in a short while. <laughs> there we go. So, so far, so good. We've got a few bits done there. You see the difference? I'm going to come back in just with this pencil and go in there a little bit darker. You see the difference that's made? And now just very gently over the top a little bit. Just a little bit more. So almost like a second layer. The same here. Okay. And again. Along here. Now if you've used um, a black pen you're still going to do the same thing you're going to get a slightly different look as you know with it being a black pen same in there look that's it it's worth doing this extra layer and it's a bit scary going a bit dark but it's it's well worth it trust me you're going to get a really good result from it you see so i'm going over each one again so i can get a little bit more of a line in there Okay, and again with the torty on, just gonna sort of see just back and forth really. We don't need to shade much in the sense of having it traveling, we just want to give it the darkness it needs there. There we go. Okay. There we are. Just a little oh, bit there. So it's going to make that lighter one really stand out, isn't it? And that's what we want. Might even bring my white pencil in a short while. Okay. So there's still a couple of things we've not shaded. I just wanted to get those darkened first. And I want to come back in with pencil now. You see these little sections? Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit to that top edge. Now if we look at it from this side. I'm going to do this side and this side, see? And then turn it round. Same again, look, doing the top of each one. And then this side and this side. And again, this one and this one. And this side. And so I've had a crazy idea, Leslie. Um, after talking about quilting and things today and thinking we've now got 289 tiles, I want to say that we actually do a quilt using all the 289 tiles. Each, each little square is a different tile. What do you think? When we get time, eh? When we get time. That would look amazing. I think even actually if you, I don't know, maybe you pick out um, all the tens. So you pick out tile 10, tile 20, tile 30, 40. Then you do a little uh, a block for each one. I wonder how, how that would look. See what I'm doing now? Softening those edges. So maybe 289 tiles or however many it would be by the time we got to it. It would be maybe a little too many. <laughs> when we both retire. <laughs> oh, goodness me. There we go. It would be a nice idea, though. It would be really cool, wouldn't it? To do that. And I still want to go back to the Create Art project. You know, the one that we did, like the Advent tile? And I want to do that as a quilt. That would look amazing. Okay. So there's one line we've still not done yet. And that's, see where we did this little aura here? So what I'd like to do, I'm going to come in with a red pencil. And I'm using red because I've used a red pen. I'd like it to match. So if I was going to use black, I'd perhaps use my, my black pencil. And what I want to do is I want to add some red to the edge of that line, you see, and just sort of fade it in. Now I'm going to zoom it in. So. Oh, hi, Rose. I'm sorry. I've, I've, I hope I've done it on the right page. I'm sure I have. 
I don't know why you, you lost me, but I'm glad you found us. See, just sort of a little bit of pencil there. Now, of course, if you've got pastels, you can use your tortillon to blend this out, but because I'm using pencils, I've got to sort of do a little bit myself. And because there's quite a bit of graphite on there, I can get away with the not really shading it in. I'm just sort of adding in a little bit. See the difference that's making there? There we go. Okay, let's have a little look at what we're doing there. Okay, you see how that red's made the difference? So what I want to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of red to a couple of the bubbles. Nothing, nothing major because we're not going to shade it. We just want to Give them a little bit of attention. There we go. Maybe uh, a bit in the middle. And maybe I'm just going to put a little bit of red just in and around some of that shading there. Because we've already shaded, you don't really have to colour it. Just sort of on those little areas. A bit of pencil there. And of course, there's nothing stopping you bringing another colour pencil in if you want to. Or you could bring a black in. Let's do a bit of that. When did that would be nice? Different colours for each layer. See, I don't want to bring too much black in because it's going to take over. But you see, just doing a little bit at the sides. There we go. And it's because it's already dark there. It's just going to enhance what we've already got rather than trying to sort of overdo it. You see, so I'm not going all the way across. I'm doing part way, see? And part way. And then again, sort of this one. And we'll see how this looks. So yeah, if you use a different colour, you're going to get a completely different sort of feel. And of course, depending on what colour tile you use, Again, I'm going to do these ones, but see, I'm not going all the way to the middle. I'm stopping part way. Otherwise, we might have just have drawn it in black to start with. This is just enhancing those little bits. That's what we want to do, of course. That's how it is. Um, highlight this middle bit. There we go. And then see, just a little bit in. There. Same sort of thing, look, just going part way rather than all the way across. There we go. Alright, just a little bit in the bottom of those. Now, let's go a bit bigger. You can see just a little, I'm in just a little bit, see? Again, just a little bit. I said, don't do I have that? I've only got a purple gel pen in my pencil case. I don't want to use a purple gel pen on it. But it's absolutely screaming out for a bit of gel. Just see if I have got any in my bag behind me. No, they're in my other. They're in my car. But well, that's okay. It'd be really nice to have a little bit of uh, gold or silver around here. So just see having that extra little bit of of black in there, I think maybe just a touch, you know where I've put that red pencil. And again, just on those edges. And even if you've used black all the way through, you can still come in and do this. So just want it to stand out a little bit more there. Maybe just that top corner, you see? Just the top corner. I'm just working my way around. It's nice to spend a little bit of time, isn't it? Just adding these extra little bits. It uh, makes a huge difference, I think. And of course, it's sometimes we don't always get round to it. Depends on the design, doesn't it? How much work we're doing on it. Let's see? Let's have a look at that. Okay. Look at that. See, what we wanted is... Uh, that main bit to sort of stand out there, but we've also got these little edges going on as well. 
there we go that's kind of nice again it just shows that you don't always have to use the black sometimes you could try it with a different color it just gives it a different effect i would definitely say well, i'm going to do that in a minute here's one i did on a blush tile a little bit similar same but not all completely you see i've gone smaller in the middle there but i've actually used black so that's my blush or is it cream no it's a blush Definitely blushed out. I've used just black on that, so I've not even used black pencil to sort of go in. If I was to do that, I'd still go in and do the same thing. And you would get, you see, a similar sort of feel. There we are. If I do a little bit so you can see it. But there's nothing stopping you doing a black tile like this or a, a, a blush tile or a white tile with black pen and then actually coming in and adding some colour over the top. So you could do either or. You, it's, it's entirely up to you what you you want to do with it, is it? As always. So there we go. Um, I'm going to just sort of put my little signature on there. So I'm going to put it down there. There we go. So there it is. Our tile for for this evening or for today. You see, you can, slight difference without the colour, isn't it? It depends what you want to do, whatever you prefer. So. And there's our, our one that we've just drawn. So enjoy this one and, you know, have a play with it. Try a different colour tie. I'll see how you go. And, uh, yeah, look forward to all your, your parcel and your Day of the Dead and your door and everything coming to, uh, to be able to have a play with that. But in the meantime, you've got this. So don't forget to post. One thing, when you do post your tiles, if at all possible, could you put hashtag Santangle somewhere in the in the comment or somewhere in the, the description? Because then what will happen is if anybody anywhere types in Santangle, they'll actually find your post and it'll start to sort of uh, work its way out to some people that may may not know what Santangle is. What Where have they been? But yeah, that's all you would have to do is when you're just writing your little thing at the top that you normally do to describe or what, just put ha in, just put hashtag and then Santangle and it'll just mean that more people will be able to find your post. So that'd be lovely. Have a lovely evening, everybody. And I'm sure off to now go and um, get myself or get John to get me <laughs> a glass of Prosecco. And I will see you all, all being well, back here on Friday at two o'clock, usual time. So take care, everybody. Have a lovely evening and I'll see you all soon. Okay.